This is a groundbreaking study in reference to what taurine can do for an individual. Now, many of us recognize L-taurine as an amino acid that's normally associated with eye health and heart health. But what taurine does as far as increasing superoxide dismutase, an antioxidant enzyme for those not familiar, is just astounding. For example, this was a 16-week trial in females between 55 to 70, and this was a double-blind, double randomized, controlled placebo trial. In the taurine group, which represented only about one and a half grams of taurine consumption per day, there was a 20% increase in superoxide dismutase. Now, for those familiar with the challenges in reference to basically the consumption and getting blood levels of this uh, basically antioxidant enzyme side up through oral consumption, because primarily when someone consumes superoxide dismutase, it is very, very vulnerable to being broken down to other amino acids before ever getting absorbed into the bloodstream. So a lot of trials in reference to basically superoxide dismutase are done through injection. Now there could be some future technology uh, which could overcome these challenges and obstacles, but in the meantime, taurine, 16 weeks, one and a half grams consumption per day in women between the ages of 55 and 70, a 20% increase over the control group. Another amazing thing before we get a breakdown in reference to basically um, the study itself is malaldehyde. Malaldehyde, very few people I should say are familiar with. But malaldehyde has to represent with oxidative, I should say, lipid peroxidation. Uh, basically the free radical or chain of free radical damage to basically lipids. Very bad. Now, in the study itself, the control group had a 23% increase in malandehyde. Uh, but the basically in the taurine group, there was a 4% reduction. Maybe that was not statistically significant enough to bring it out as far as one of the main headlines in regards to the outcome. But that is pretty amazing as well. And now we'll get into. So let's begin with looking at the research itself as we begin. Here we go. All right, study shows that amino acid taurine can be used in anti-aging therapy. Now also too, I wanna to caveat that, to basically using it as a narrow scope of just basically anti-aging, knowing the huge impact that superoxide dismutase has on many uh, basically mechanisms in the body, including inflammation and other diseases. Yeah, the door is wide open, but yet yeah, let us proceed. Without further ado, study shows amino acid taurine can be used in anti-aging therapy. The study described in the article was conducted at the University of Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, sorry, USP in Brazil, and involved 24 women volunteers aged between 55 and 70. They were randomly divided into two groups. One group took three 500 milligram capsules of taurine per day for 16 weeks, not an excessive amount, one half grams per day. The other took capsules containing only cornstarch, the placebo. Neither the participants nor the researchers knew which group each volunteer belonged to. Henceforth, double-blind controlled placebo study. Markers of oxidative stress were analyzed in blood samples collected before and at the end of the intervention. One of the most interesting results was an increase of almost 20% in levels of the antioxidant enzyme superoxide, dismutase, otherwise SOD, in the groups that received the taurine compared with a 3.5% decrease in the control group. As the authors explained, SOD protects cells against harmful reactions of the superoxide radical. According to the researcher, very few studies of the effects of taurine in the context of aging can be found in scientific literature. This study, quoting, was a first step aimed at investigating the ideal dose and possible side effects, none which was observed in any of the participants. Two other markers of oxidative stress analyzed besides SOD, as we kind of skip around, the antioxidant enzyme glutathione reductase. Now keep in mind, the taurine did help do wonders for SOD, which really truly is groundbreaking research. Glutathione, hmm. But yeah, as we discussed before in other studies, glycine and acetylcysteine, without injecting too much publisher bias, 
have a powerful effect in raising that. Now imagine, let's, let's basically take a little bit of a side trip here. Imagine glutathione, as far as, sorry, but that, not glutathione, glycine and acetylcysteine and taurine in combination, provided they don't cancel each other out somehow. Wow, that is a powerful, powerful combo. But proceed, uh, with, which decreased significantly in both groups and malandialdehyde, MDA, which increased 23% in the control groups, not a good thing and decreased 4% in the taurine supplementation group. Remember, malandialdehyde is often uh, referenced in regard to oxidative degradation of lipids and a free radical thing, not good. So lower, better. Now also too, you could speculate, which probably very probable, that the malandialdehyde levels were kept in check by superoxide dismutase, again, that's conjecture, and that's what we call publisher bias. We're gonna dimensions to the research that the researchers didn't research. You know what I mean? But still just the same, it's an interesting thought. In addition to markers of oxidative stress, we analyze levels of the minerals such as selenium, zinc, magnesium, and calcium, which are important to the functioning of these enzymes. Explain to the researcher. Selenium, for example, is a cofactor for glutathione peroxidase, which indirectly helps eliminate hydrogen peroxide from an organism and was reduced in both groups. So they're just saying, hey, we were just looking at the taurine and these could be other factors could be responsible for not seeing a rise in glutathione peroxidase. But however, though, when you're looking at that, looking at the incredible results of a 20% increase in 16 weeks of the superoxide dismutase, which is phenomenal on its own. Looking for glutathione, these other factors could play a role in your own research. Research also said taurine supplementation is the only, only the cherry of the cake, cherry on the cake, cherry of the cake, cherry on the cake, and cannot work miracles on its own. A healthy lifestyle with a balanced diet and regular exercise is fundamental for the anti-aging effect to occur. So he, the basically advice from the researcher it said, as said, was basically saying, hey, yeah, taurine's great, but doesn't mean don't engage in these other activities, which are also very, very positive and also work in combination with the taurine itself. And as I said, people go, well, why not just take superoxide dismutase on its own? And I'm not gonna get into the debate because there are many different forms of sod out there, terracotta, lipids, so on and so forth. Uh, but for example, if you go to your Wikipedia, if you trust it per se, uh, it'll explain why taking sod orally has its challenges. And that's putting it in a very, very kind way. But still, just the same, taurine, what an incredible, incredible outcome to the research. I don't think you really can get the total dimension of that solid impact. We're talking a 20% increase over control of superoxide dismutase, or I should say almost 20%. And it's just a 16 week period of time, just through the consumption of three 500 milligram capsules per day. And this is an older generation, 55 to 70 female group. That 20% increase is astounding. Astounding. Knowing the impact that sod has on the total biology, not just an anti-aging, but also other diseases and ailments, inflammation of joints, rheumatoid arthritis, so on and so forth. You do your research on it, it's just gonna open up many, many, many doors for you. And that is just incredible. Plus, the added bonus, which probably related to sod, is the malandialdehyde uh, levels being kept in check, we'll just say. We're not gonna say it was lower because we don't know if that was actually statistically significant in the research, but compared to the control, 23% increase in the control, wow, it's keeping yourself fresh, keeping those fatty acids from oxidizing. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, keeping things preserved in a healthy way. Again. Gratitude to the researchers, wonderful, wonderful exploration of Torian itself. And as always, at the end of every video, I am always humbled to watch, and I'll see you all next week. Catch you then. Bye.